Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how you can export your FBX files directly from iClone, uh, now with version 7. So in previous versions of iClone, you, were, you had to go through the 3D Exchange uh, software. So you'd have to purchase iClone Pipeline, 3D Exchange Pipeline, and then you would export your FBX files via 3D Exchange. However, now with version 7, we do still need the uh, 3D Exchange Pipeline. However, you can export directly from iClone your FBX files uh, so we kind of save you a step there. If you want to figure out more what I'm talking about here, you can go to the Reillusion website and go to the top menu here. Just click on uh, 3D Animation and iClone. And then on the top right, just like Buy. And you'll see a couple of versions here. So there's the Pro Bundle. So with this Pro Bundle, you're not able to export FBX, so just keep that in mind. You need to make sure that you have this Pipeline uh, uh, version of 3D Exchange 7. And then you'll be able to export FBX files uh, directly from iClone or in 3D Exchange if you want as well. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to close down the Explorer now. All right, so let's take a look at the export options that we have. So uh, what I'm going to do first is we're going to export a couple things. I have this avatar. I'm going to open up a prop here. Let's just make our uh, a little bit bigger here. And I'm going to export a camera. So with iClone 7, we have one-to-one -one cameras with other software such as uh, Max and Maya. So in this example, I'm going to select the female ninja and the ground and the camera. Just uh, control select those, all those together and go to file and then export and export FBX. Now, if you have the pro version of 3D Exchange, you won't have this option to ex export FBX. Okay, so let's just go ahead and click that. Now, there's a number of different target tool presets here. We have these all preset uh, for you, uh, depending on where you're exporting to. I'm going to use 3ds Max for this tutorial here, um, but we have... Uh, other options such as Unreal, Unity, and uh, Maya, and so on and so forth, all the way down to Cinema 4D. All right, and you also want to make sure that your target uh, tool frames per second is the same as the frames per second you choose here. So if you have, you know, 30 frames per second in your target tool, such as 3ds Max, uh, you want to choose 30 uh, frames per second here. You can also choose 24 frames per second uh, for film and stuff like that. I'm going to choose uh, 30 frames per second, which is the NTSC standard there, and we'll go ahead and export this. Okay, so now here you'll see the entire scene in 3ds Max, uh, the character and the ground. If we just switch to our camera view, you can see the camera view and the view in iClone is exactly the same, the same distance, the same camera, everything like that. So we have a successful export of that current frame. All right, so let's continue on with the other export settings. Uh, for now, I've just selected the female ninja by herself, and we're going to go up to File and Export and Export FBX one more time. And we're going to talk about export range at the end of this tutorial, so just uh, hold your horses on that one. Now let's talk about the texture settings. So we have the option to embed the textures in your FBX file. Now there's a couple of options here you can choose to embed or not to embed. I've already exported both options and I'm going to show you in the Explorer the different options that we have. So the export embed texture, uh, we, we have this disabled, so no choose means we don't have it chosen. So we've uh, chosen not to embed the textures and you can see the file size is significantly lower but when you choose not to embed the textures it's going to actually create a separate folder for you with the .fbm suffix here and if we go into that you can see all the texture files right here okay so just uh, everything that you'll need for your character and you can apply them in your target tool at your own uh, leisure okay however if you decide to embed the textures uh, you can see this file is significantly larger However, keep in mind, no matter which option you choose, there's also going to be another folder called Textures that is exported separately. And this, this Textures uh, folder will contain the metallic and roughness maps because uh, FBX export in general does not include, uh, FBX files cannot carry the roughness and metallic maps in general. Okay, so let's go to the Textures folder here and take a look at this maybe badge, for example, here. Just go like further into the files. And you can see it contains a roughness map, a metallic map, and also a metallic alpha map, which is used in Unity uh, for the PBR effects. So if we go back into iClone, we can find those on our character. Let's just uh, go into here, her materials here and uh, pull down a little bit, go into the badge. So here you can see the badge, uh, all these maps right here, and that metallic and roughness map right there. Okay, so that's basically uh, all the maps that are included. These metallic and roughness maps are included, uh, which I just showed you in Explore right here in addition to the metallic alpha map, which is used in Unity. Okay, let's close that down and take a look at our next option here. So again, uh, select a female, export FBX right here. And the next option is max image size. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. You can set the maximum image size if you want for all your uh, the dimensions of all your images. 
anywhere from 4096 to 256. Okay, so that's really pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to go into more detail on that. Um, however, we also have the option here for convert image format. So we can select this and convert the uh, texture files for our FBX to any image format we want. Uh, BMP, uh, JPEG, target, PNG, and TIFF files. However, uh, you can see that this option below, merge opacity to diffuse texture, this will only be available if you choose Targa or PNG. Any of the other options like JPEG, it won't become available, or BMP, it won't become available. So the Targa and PNG options are uh, included exclusively for Unity and Unreal engines. Now the PNG, if you select PNG, uh, it'll remove the uh, background from your diffuse map. So for example, let's take a look at our character's hair. Okay, we're going to take a look at the hair right now and go over here. You can see we have this uh, high ponytail, so the base color and the opacity. If you choose PNG on the export, it's going to merge these and kind of uh, use the opacity and the base color. It's going to basically remove the unneeded uh, content or the unneeded texture from your base color. So I'm just going to show you that in the Explore window right now, if we just uh, open that up. So you can see if we uh, click here, if we have a PNG, uh, if we use the PNG option right here, what's going to happen, I'm going to find the uh, hair ponytail here. This one right here, you can see the diffuse high ponytail. It's going to, we're going to go ahead and open this in Photoshop. So this is the PNG right here. So what's going to happen with this is it's going to remove that background. So you can see this is the base color map right here. Once it loads in uh, Photoshop real quick here, you can see it removed the background of the stuff that we don't need. So if we launch the original texture in Photoshop, this is what the original texture looks like, okay? And we'll just put this be, uh, put these two side by side here. And what it does, once you save it to PNG, it'll automatically do this. It'll automatically use the opacity map to create a new diffuse map for use in uh, Unreal or uh, Unity. Okay, if you select the Targa uh, option, let's go back to the uh, Targa option right here. What's going to happen with the Targa option if we choose, uh, search a uh, high ponytail here. Ponytail, uh, there we go. Okay, so high ponytail diffuse right here. Let's just bring this into uh, Photoshop. So you can see this one here. Uh, it looks like it has the entire thing, the entire diffuse map. However, if we go over here to channels, you can see we have on the, on the alpha channel, we have all the transparency data on the alpha channel right here. Okay, so there's the diffuse. There's the alpha by itself. All right, so just uh, two kind of similar, uh, two different approaches to uh, you know achieving the same end. Okay, we'll just close down Photoshop right now. We don't need it anymore. Let's go back to our other folder here. And we have another option here. Let's just go back to Female Ninja and File Export one more time just to get that uh, window back up there. We also have the option to delete unused morphs. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this down. I'm going to press F3 and go into the timeline. And in fact, we do have some animation on this project. So you pay close attention to the, to the female. She's really gaining some weight as we move our slider along here. And we're using the Morph Animator, obviously, to achieve this effect for our character, making her a little tubbier there, okay? So if, uh, to achieve that, we can select our character, go over here uh, to our Motion Tools, and select the Morph Animator, okay? And you can see as we move our slider along, those are the uh, Morph targets that we're, we're using here. Now, if we're only exporting the current frame, we can kind of save resources by only exporting the morph targets from that current frame. We don't need any anything else. We don't need all this, all these morph targets right here. So it'll just kind of delete all those, uh, and it kind of saves resources. So if we uh, close that down, and you can also find those in the uh, in the uh, facial uh, key option right here. Some facial key under expression. You have a number of different expressions, and here's some these sliders for the facial morph targets as well, it'll delete these as well. Okay, so saving quite a lot of resources. And if I go into my explore window here, let's take a look at where that is. So delete unused morphs right here. You can see this one, if we delete unused morphs, that's the uh, file size right there. And it'll have the same uh, files and everything like that in there. So that's another option. It almost uh, cuts your file size in half. If you only want to export like a still image for some reason, or still uh, character for some reason, a still model, then that's definitely an option for you as well. So one more option there, the last one, is if we go to export, export FBX, there's all the, also the option to delete the hidden mesh. Okay, so this character, once you uh, create a character in Character Creator, you often have the option to, you always have the option to delete a hidden mesh. So in this particular character, she has, uh, if we take, uh, make the tight leather pants invisible there, you can see, holy cow, there's nothing there. Where did her, where did her legs go? And also with her uh, battle suit, if we take that off, 
So the basically her entire skin body mesh is mostly hidden and it's covered by the uh, leather pants here and the battle suit. So there's not two layers of mesh. We only have the outer layer of mesh. So it's kind of saving resources. And this is what that looks like in 3ds Max. You can see on the left there we have the lower mesh kind of breaking through and on the right we have the delete uh, unused mesh which is the more efficient uh, option for saving system resources. All right, so in this next example, we're gonna take a look at the export range. So right now, if we export current frame, we have this dude just kind of standing here. He's just kind of like, you know, giving a power pose. Uh, if we export the current frame, you can see I've already exported it. Let's take a look at what it looks like in uh, 3ds Max here. You can see, boom, that's it. We don't have any animation. Uh, that's basically it. And we also have the option to choose T-Pose and Reset Transform. So if we export that, which I've already done here, you can see the FBX file. If we open that up in 3ds Max, it's going to look a little bit different. So if we go to File up here and just choose, uh, let's go up here to New and go to No. All right, and File, we're just going to go ahead and import another one in. Import that T-Pose in. All right, just choose that. And once that loads in, we need to go down to here and go ahead and press OK. And we'll have the dude in his T-Pose. Just that and the Reset Transform information there. Okay, so pretty fast import. There you go. There's just the character with the T-Pose and that's about it. Now if we choose All, basically what's going to happen is it's going to choose the entire project. So if we go to our uh, settings, you can see we only have a project a length of 600 frames. But if we select All, it's going to choose the entire timeline. Okay, so you know you got to be aware of that. So we go to export, we have the option for range, and range is the option that we want. So what I have here is an animation of our character kind of just uh, running through some blocks and just kind of, you know, powerfully punching through these uh, blocks right here. What a real man, all right? So we have that uh, animation all set, and the, the whole animation takes about uh, uh, 400 and something, 420 odd frames, okay? So just uh, if we want to export this range, then we need to go up to file and export. And once again, uh, we need to choose something to export first. So let's select our uh, avatar here, select the uh, male character. And for our props, for this particular one, we need to choose the uh, brick option right here. And we need to choose all those separate fragments of the broken brick, okay? So we need to twirl that down and select all the separate fragments. So just shift select them all. And also our uh, camera, let's choose the camera panoramic, which is the current camera that we have there, oh, not the sky there to control select not shift select okay so once we select all this stuff and we can control select the mail there as well all right so all this stuff is going to be exported so again uh, file and export export fbx and now we're going to choose the range you can see it goes from 1 to 430 20 odd 430 same thing okay so then we can go ahead and export that and once we finish that export we need to go into uh, import in 3ds max here and choose our export range max version for 3ds max there and in our uh, import settings here let's go down here uh, for bone conversion uh, we need to go ahead and change that to convert as dummy okay and then go down to the bottom here and choose our camera import our camera of course and press ok and here's our animation with the bricks and everything will look like in uh, 3ds max we go ahead and just play this one back We'll have our character just uh, watch. Just uh, go ahead and go to our end time. You change your end time to 220 there. Okay, in the animation, and let's go ahead and scroll through. Boom! All right, there we have our dude just breaking through the wall. Pretty cool stuff. We can play it back in real time here. Well, there you go. What a man! All right, so that's really about all I want to show you in this uh, tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully, you learned a lot about. Uh, you know how to export uh, various uh, ranges and various texture uh, versions uh, from iClone directly into FBX format. So make sure you check out our forums as well over at forum.reillusion.com if you want uh, some comprehensive uh, help from other uh, users in our community. And as well, I hope to see you in the next video.